Hi guys, my name's Andy and welcome to lesson five of this series of videos for the True Fire Guitar Teacher Competition. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to be covering how to improvise using the G major pentatonic scale that we learnt in lesson four. And you can improvise over any of the chord sequences that you came up with in lesson three, but I've also got a nice backing track for you to play over, which is provided in lesson notes of this lesson. So I'm going to presume that you've already played your G major pentatonic plenty of times so that you can play it at this kind of speed and it's sounding kind of smooth but we're wanting to be able to do something with it. We're wanting to be able to put it into a musical situation rather than just hey you know a scale and then move on. You know you, you want to be able to actually use the notes from that scale and even learn songs using that one scale as well. Um, but in this lesson we're going to be covering a five step method or, or five things that you can try to get you started uh, improvising as I say and this is perfect to do over the chord sequences or the songs. So the first thing to try when you're comfortable walking up and down the scale and you have the notes memorized is to change direction um, almost at random and typically most melodies again all we're doing here is trying to think of what actual songs that you like do and then copy them so most melodies would kind of go up a little bit maybe three or four notes and then come back down and if you think of what a singer would do you know if they're singing a simple song maybe like a nursery rhyme or something la 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 you know go up at three or four notes turn around and come back down again um, to add to that there might be some kind of significant jump in there as well so we might want to put in a little jump la 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 but fundamentally you just need to get used to changing direction at any point that you choose and as I say keep it as random as possible so keep everything even while you're doing this and start from the thickest note where you normally start your scale come back down keep walking up turn around come back down go up and get really really comfortable doing that change in direction at any time because that's what any melodies or scale or uh, songs I should say uh, are going to end up doing. The other thing that I did in the first example there was I paused now this is the great freedom that you have with any lead guitar playing or any riffs that you may come up with is that you can make the rhythm as interesting as possible you don't have to always play on the beat or eighth strumming or anything like this when we're doing lead guitar in fact you need absolutely need to pause and think about it like a singer you know if you have a singer who uh, hasn't got a pause in his song to breathe the guy's not going to be able to sing it okay so we need a pause again my first example la 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 pause and I can stay on that note or I can stop it by just relaxing my finger or muting at this side. Suddenly it doesn't sound like a scale, but I'm still going in scale order. But I'm changing direction at almost random points, but I'm also pausing and I'm either staying on one note a little longer or I'm putting silence in there. And Certainly with the rhythm you may end up getting better results or more memorable results if you choose to go a, a certain way through and then repeat whatever rhythm you've just done. So there I'm just doing a simple rhythm of three notes. One, two, three. But every time I do that, pause on the last note and then keep that cycle of one, two, three going but with any notes that I want. And it's just a, a nice simple example. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Walking up and down my scale, it does not matter which notes I choose so long as I'm not missing any notes out, I'm still going in scale order and I'm keeping it to this, this rhythm that I've just decided on. And it could be anything, it could be two notes. It could be four. Four. 
suddenly sounds a little bit like a melody, okay? These are just rough ideas for you to try out if you're totally new to improvising and the whole thing kind of scares you witless. You want to be trying these things out. Um, the next thing is to add some kind of phrasing to it. So phrasing is how we play something in terms of maybe using hammer-ons, flick-offs, or even slides. And there's a couple of cool things that we can try in this situation, which are quite easy to do, but you should definitely try out. So the first thing we want to do is try and hammer on any notes after picking an open string. So for example, pick, pick, hammer first finger on. Pick, pick, hammer first finger on. And any note at that second fret specifically is a great opportunity to pick the open string and then hammer on at that second fret. Pick, hammer second fret. And then when we get to the thinnest two strings, pick, hammer your middle finger on. Pick, hammer. Now this hammer on's and flick off's idea, so a flick off is just going the other way. Kind of flicking downwards and trying to make it sound as even as possible. The, the temptation is, or, or the capability of this, is to do things an awful lot faster. So, you can do kind of the guitar rock hero kind of thing. But you wanna get used to trying to make the notes that you're hammering or flicking off to sound exactly the same as if they've been picked. This is all a lot easier if you have an awful lot of overdrive on, because everything rings out a lot more. But you should try it without that overdrive. And it's just a nice way to, as I say, add phrasing to it, or maybe add a little faster section. Not as reliant on your picking hand. And if we use any slides, just a great thing to try on any of the thinner three strings with using this scale. Take your first finger or your middle finger, pick the note that you would have your finger on on that string, and just slide two frets towards yourself. So from, for example, on the third string, from fret two, slide, keep finger down at the same pressure, and go to fret four. Pick, slide. And if you do that in maybe a little combination, that suddenly sounds an awful, there's an awful lot more to it rather than just going, kinda getting the clunky open strings, you know, we've suddenly got a fluidity to it sounds quite lyrical. You can even do it in pairs of strings as well. There's a flat first finger on the thinnest two strings. Really cool thing to try and if you've never done it before, have a little experiment with that and I guarantee you, you will uh, find some songs where you can hear that sort of sound in it. Um, certainly, the opening intro or the solo to Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd is something that you want to look at if all of this is sounding like your style of guitar playing. That song, the intro especially, is absolutely, it's a wonderful example of this. So just to recap through your five-step method, you want to be changing direction at random and adding a pause where you can. And I'm really suggesting that you go for three or four notes as an example. So maybe going three notes, pausing, turning round, going four notes. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Is a really good example to get you started with that. And then finally, we wanna be adding phrasing in the form of hammer-ons and flick-offs. And uh, finally, you want to be adding some slides, two fret slides specifically on the thinner three strings. Mm -hmm.